Hey, oh, this is We Talk episode four, and just as we promised last week, uh, I'm going to be doing my top five best games of 2013. I did a video like this last year, uh, but I did it on my old channel, and I, the video's not there anymore, and I kind of lost where the video is. But this was my list from last year. Number five was Halo 4. Number four was The Walking Dead, the game. Number three was Mass Effect 3. Number two was Far Cry 3. And number one was Guild Wars 2. And that was the list from last year. But this year we have a brand new list, so I want to get right into it. Number five was Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag. Yes, I know, I got an Assassin's Creed game on my top five list. The reason why is because I feel like Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag is the redeeming game of the entire series. Because I didn't like, I mean, Brothers, Brotherhood was good. Um, the first game was kind of like the first game. And, you know, if you're playing through all the Assassin's Creed games... It's the one where you're like, uh, it, it's sort of like the Mass Effect 1 where it's like you, you play it just and but you kind of have to grind through it. You don't look forward to doing it, but you do it just because you want the exp you want the full experience. Um, Assassin's Creed 2 is considered the best one. I personally consider that Assassin's Creed 4 might be a little bit better than it just because of the fact that it's so open world and it's so immersive. And, uh, you know, Revelations and Assassin's Creed 3 can go F itself. I do not like those two games. Um... But I will say that Assassin's Creed 4, the, the main character, Edward, is leagues better, more interesting than it, uh, Connor was. Instead, of, Connor was so boring and bland, whereas Edward is very, like, he, 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 does, he does things because he wants to be famous and he wants to have a lot of money. He's, he's what you would think a pirate would be, and I think that they illustrated that so well. I feel like the story was kind of, it, it could have used some more polishing. That's why I think that the Assassin's Creed series suffers from coming out every, or uh, coming out annually once a year. Um, and I think that if they had, like, spaced them out and gave the game more love, because I feel like they feel like they have to come out at the end of October every single year, and if they didn't feel that way, that they could actually, you know, the same thing what they did with Watch Dogs was that the game, it wasn't going the way they wanted it to, uh, instead of rushing it and doing that, they actually feel like they should move it back, give it more time, give it some more love. I, I as, as much as I am disappointed that games get, uh, uh, delayed, in my, in the back of my head, I'm like, this is a good thing because they're giving the game more love. They're not comfortable with putting out a rushed version. And it's so easy to put out a rushed version and a crappy game that, that was rushed. Um, and I feel like the Assassin's Creed series could use, uh, could benefit from uh, actually taking the time to spend more time on it. Um, Assassin's Creed 4 is just, you know, because it knows what... I feel like when they were developing Assassin's Creed 3, they saw the naval gameplay, and then they were like, let's build a game completely around this, and then Black Flag came out. And I was so happy that Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag was the, um, the game that came out, and it, it is a pirate game, and it, it centers itself around that. Um, you guys remember Nessie Monster from the uh, Forza 5 Let's Play? Before Assassin's Creed 4 came out, he was telling me that it was still going to be... You're jumping around rooftops... And that the ship was just going to be there sometimes. Glad to report that he is so wrong. Because I, the way I play is that with open world games. I play the completely different way than everybody else plays. I actually do walk from point A to point B. I don't fast travel that much. As much as that, as much as that may sound like alien to the rest of the world. Everybody loves fast travel. And I'm not saying it's a bad thing. I like to use fast travel also. But I do like the experience of going from point A to point B. Um, the, using the ship is just, I mean, there's so much to do in the game, from plundering to searching for treasure to, you know, finding these old, uh, Aztec relics or, and, uh, maybe not Aztec, but, uh, Mayan relics or something like that. And, um, just, you know, it, there's so much to do in terms of, you know, you can go do your story, you could go do these assassin missions. It's really, 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 really awesome. And... You know, I just love plundering ships and getting into those big battles. It's just so awesome. And then you can upgrade your ship, and then you can go after other ships. I mean, like, even after you upgrade your ship fully, there are still some ships out there that will give you a challenge. It's not like you upgrade your ship, and then all of a sudden these guys all come out of nowhere and just, you know, you can an annihilate every single one of them. And it's not to the fact where it's just like you don't need to upgrade. You can still annihilate anybody anyway. You're going to need to upgrade throughout the game, especially if you're going after all the achievements, uh, which I do do. Um, I don't know. I, I feel like Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag was the redeeming quality. The multiplayer is also there. They add some. They had the multi or the uh, co-op mode for um, the um, with a uh, wolf wolf pack, I believe it is. And then they also have a game lab, so you can actually create your own style of gameplay. So they add some new things, but the the, the core gameplay of Assassin's Creed 4 multiplayer is still there. And like I said before, when I did the we talk for uh, Call of Duty Ghost. 
is that if it's not broke, don't fix it. And I don't think Assassin's Creed 4 has any other kind of gameplay, uh, multiplayer game out there that is even remotely close to what they do. Um, maybe not remotely close because, you know, there probably is some other game out there that is pretty close to it. But for what it does and for as mainstream as it is, um, Assassin's Creed 4 does a good multiplayer. Uh, but that's number five. Number four is Brothers A Tale of Two Sons. And, you know, the game is short, but I feel like it's this year's journey. Last year, or 2012, was dominated uh, the PlayStation exclusive, which was like a two-hour uh, DLC, uh, was a Journey. And there was no dialogue in it. But this year, we have Brothers, which is an Xbox exclusive. Again, it's a couple of, it's a few hours long, and not that long, but it, 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 it has two starring characters. And the story is just absolutely amazing, without even having any dialogue in it. And it also introduces a cool mechanic where it's two characters, but there's no co-op. You don't, you control both characters at the same time. One thumbstick will control the one brother while the other thumbstick controls the other. And it kind of is like a mind F because you kind of have to like go through puzzles. Like one brother can fit, the small, the younger brother can fit through, uh, you know, fit through bars and stuff. While the older brother can do like heavy lifting. And he can also swim because the little brother can't swim. And they actually, that's a whole story behind it too. It's like in the beginning of the game, they show you why the brother doesn't, uh, doesn't like to swim. He's afraid to swim. And also, it's just like, they, they, they introduce story in like the first five minutes, and it's just like, you're, you're, you're in. You're in. And it's, you know, the, the environments are also really cool. Like, there's this one level where you're going through all these, like, dead giants that all have this, like, huge battle. And then you're moving their limbs from arrows that are sticking out of them. It's really awesome. And like I said before, it's like, the story progresses. It's not like you're going, all right, we have our quest. Let's go do that quest. That is true, but it's not like nothing changes like as they go you start seeing the characters sort of change they're meeting new people as they go and uh they're starting to react to the way that they do it but you don't understand what they're saying they're saying something but it's kind of like a mumbled kind of dialect so it's kind of it, it's almost like they're not saying anything but um i don't know just the way through through the art through the uh through the gestures and the motions and the music there's just like the story was so well told and i think this game is just it, it, you'd be insane if you didn't have it on a on a uh on a top five list uh, but anyway, number three was The Last of Us. The Last of Us, developed by Naughty Dogs, was probably one of the, uh, the, the, uh, the games that everybody knew was going to be great because we, we saw it at E3 a few years ago, and immediately I was, it, it almost got me to get a PlayStation 3. I don't have a PlayStation 3, but I knew the next-gen consoles were around the corner, so I kind of put the brakes on it before I went and bought them. Uh, The Last of Us is a story about, I mean, it, it's not particularly zombies, but there is an infection. It's the closest thing to being a zombie without actually being a zombie. Um, it's kind of like a fungal infection that makes people go insane and, you know, they act like zombies. It's like if you get bit, you turn into one of these. Um, and it's just a, a post-apocalyptic world that is just consumed. There's always the constant threat, be it. And it, you know what? It, it, it's Like I said, it's, it's, to me, it's not a zombie. A zombie being an, a guy that's rotting. These guys aren't necessarily rotting. But for all intents and purposes, it, it, is, it is a zombie. Uh, but it's like the zombie apocalypse... And then complete civilization goes to crap. On top of that, it's like there's a constant threat between these zombies, or they call it the infected, or these other humans. And I think I like that. It's just like you, 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 you're, you're starting to force to be like there's always a constant danger. You're never out of danger. And um, I think a lot of people were worried about uh, this game being a giant escort mission, but it's really not. Um, and I think this really is going to come into play when we start talking about number two. Um, just that the, the, the chemistry between Joel, the main character that you play as, and this girl, Ellie, just the chemistry is so good. And it, she's so relevant. It's just like, oh, you're out of ammo and you click. And then all of a sudden she comes in and just th beams like a, like a brick at this guy's head. It's just amazing to see this stuff unfold. And the animation is awesome. The world is beautiful. And it's just such a good game. I mean, even people were talking about this being game of the year. But in, in the back of my head, I knew that these other games were going to be coming out. And that even still, you know, Grand Theft Auto V was going to be coming out. So it was just like, I know that that's going to be game of the year. But even still, The Last of Us, you got to have it involved. I know I never I said that I don't have a PlayStation 3. I also don't have a PlayStation 4. I've never played The Last of Us, but I was actually watching somebody play it from literally from start to finish. And I'm not just talking about the cutscenes, which you can actually watch the cutscenes and that that, that is an entertaining. The cutscenes are amazing. Um 
but I actually watched somebody do the gameplay, solve all the puzzles. I wanted to experience it since I didn't have the ability to experience it as a gamer. Um, to actually sit there and actually have the control in my hand and control what's going on. But just watching it unfold, it's just, I know that it was just, watching it was an awesome experience. And I know that actually playing it was an even better experience. And me sitting here and telling you that it's number three on my list of five, that should be telling enough. And I didn't even play the game. Uh, number two is Bioshock Infinite. You probably expected that I was going to say that on the fact that I said that the two were kind of like a giant escort mission, but they really aren't. Uh, Bioshock Infinite is, of course, uh, it's it's such, it, it abandons Rapture from Bioshock 1 and 2, and it goes up to the sky with this uh, Columbia. And it's such a beautiful world. I mean, as soon as you get to Columbia, like, you see the light and, like, going through, like, all the buildings, and you kind of get, like, a feeling that this world is just too good to be true. It just looks too beautiful. And you find out pretty early on that there is, like, an underlining darkness to it all. It's just like a, like a, it's, it's very racist, let's say, where uncomfortable almost and i think that bioshock infinite the developers of rational games they knew that that was the direction that they wanted to go in uh and it, you know the entire game just tugs at you emotionally and that's why uh bioshock infinite is better than the last of us just because of the fact that number one the ending was just a complete mind and the uh throughout the game it's just like even when you because when you play through the last of us the first time and then you play it again you're probably going to get the same experience but if you play through bioshock infinite once and then play it again the second time, that is a completely new experience because once you see the ending and then you start noticing things as you play it again, things you didn't notice the first time but you did this time. Uh, I think that the chemistry between Booker DeWitt, which also a fun fact, was the same voice actor that played Joel in The Last of Us. Um, the chemistry between Booker DeWitt and Elizabeth it's just so good. And again, just like Ellie in The Last of Us, she wasn't irrelevant. It wasn't a giant escort mission. You didn't have to guard her. You didn't, she didn't have her own, like, health bar that you had to be protected by. It wasn't like, oh, the enemies, if they get off screen, then you lose. Um, she is honestly so useful where it just at the most convenient time, it's just like, I'm low on health. I have no health. And out of nowhere, she says, book or catch. And then she gives you the health pack. And it's just like, that was so useful because I needed that at the exact same time. Bioshock Infinite was beautifully made. Incredible story. Incredible ending. Incredible gameplay. So good on so many levels. Um, I can't speak enough of how good Bioshock Infinite is. And even playing through it once, twice, three times, four times, it's still awesome. Uh, number one, of course, is Grand Theft Auto V. Grand Theft Auto V, again, is uh, just Rockstar is such a master game developing company because of the fact that they're just every constantly, 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 they make a good game. I know a lot of people didn't like Grand Theft Auto 4, or at least some of the people that I talked to aren't really fans of Grand Theft Auto 4. I was. So I knew that Grand Theft Auto V was going to be good. I was a huge fan of Red Dead Redemption. And, but speaking of that, I really hope that they do a zombie DLC for Grand Theft Auto V. If you don't, I am just going to give up. And I say that. I'm not really going to give up. But the fact that they, you can't not do that. Uh, for Grand Theft Auto V, though, it's just so so immersive. There's so much more to do. The fact that there's three protagonists between Franklin, Michael, and Trevor is one thing. And playing as each of them, you can say that they're a different experience. But they're really not a different experience. I mean, like, yeah, they have their own missions here and there. But those missions are kind of relevant. You kind of have to do them in order to get through the game. Um, yes, they do have their exclusive stranger missions, but, you know, it's, it's, you know, they, 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 the, the ex general experience is generally the same. I mean, but there's so much to do. It's like, you can play golf, and some people have said that the golf minigame inside of Grand Theft Auto is actually better than most golf games that just are only golf. You can play tennis in the game, you can go skiing, you can go, you can go do a triathlon, and then you can go online and just create your own character. Which has not yet been, like, not to that depth, been before done in a Grand Theft Auto game. And I think that, it's just, Grand Theft Auto V, I just, it's just so good. Just, it looks good, it plays good, and no matter what, there's always a story that you can create. There's so much mayhem you can get into. It's just, just ridiculously good. And I knew that even when they announced it, seeing the trailers for it, seeing what everybody was talking about, I knew that that game was going to be a game that was going to win Game of the Year, was going to be on my number one. For top or for top five best games of 2013, I just I, I just automatically knew that that game was going to be the game. Um, 
I know. I just I, I, I could sit here all day, but I'm kind of rushing through it because we're already at 15 minutes, and I don't want to go 20 minutes because then the video will take forever to export. And I do have to do some editing here with putting in, like, general B-roll. That's why I'm talking about Assassin's Creed. I have to put in Assassin's Creed. I'm talking about Brothers. I have to put in Brothers. Uh, I apologize if they're not exactly matching up with what I was saying, but just the fact that they were there is what, what you know, it's the general idea that I wanted to go for. Uh, but there's my top five list. Number one was Grand Theft Auto V. Number two was Bioshock Infinite. Number three was The Last of Us. Number four was Brothers A Tale of Two Sons. And number five was Assassin's Creed IV Black Flag. I really am looking forward to uh, 2014 with Watch Dogs Destiny, which I think comes out in 2014. I'm actually not sure. Uh, and, as, of course, Titanfall. I'm, I'm, I'm absolutely thrilled to, and excited to experience Titanfall, so I really can't wait for that. But we're about almost 16 minutes now. Uh, that was episode four of We Talk. Thank you for watching, and I will see you guys next time.